Today we are visiting Monterey Bay, which is about two hours south of San Francisco and an hour and a half from our house in Redwood City. Our GPS took us over the Santa Cruz Mountains to Highway 1, which was surprising but quite scenic. As with most parts of the San Francisco Bay Area and the Central Coast, we drove through multiple microclimates, encountering sunshine, fog with heavy mist, and some general grayness that we associate with summers on the coast. Monterey is beautiful, with stunning coastal scenery, rich marine life, and historical significance for California. And now home to one of the places we are visiting today, the Monterey Bay Aquarium, along with many sea otters, dolphins, whales, and birds. You can experience many outdoor activities, including hiking, kayaking, scuba diving, and whale watching. Monterey, particularly Cannery Row, was once the center of the sardine packing industry until the mid 1950s when it collapsed due to overfishing. Now, it's a fairly touristy spot with shops, hotels, and restaurants, and some historical spots and placards. Monterey is very proud of its connection with John Steinbeck, and many places in Monterey, especially Cannery Row, prominently feature Steinbeck's legacy through museums, plaques, and monuments. And now, on to the Monterey Bay Aquarium, which is on Cannery Row. The Monterey Bay Aquarium is a world-class museum that attracts visitors from around the world. It is dedicated to marine conservation and extensive research on marine species, habitats, and ecosystems. It's also a special place for us as a family as we took our kids there as they were growing up quite a few times and we even slept with the fish. Not sure any sleeping was involved. <laughs> I really had hoped we would be able to watch the fish all night long, but they had rolled down nightshades, so it was just dark. It was very cool to go behind the scenes and get up close and personal with so many of the exhibits, which was not the case during our most recent visit because so many people were there. Usually the first place that we visit is the otter viewing area, definitely a fan favorite among visitors. It's generally crowded during the set feeding times and less so the rest of the day, but for some reason, the day that we visited, it was nearly impossible to see the two otters in the tank, either from the upper and above water viewing platform and the underwater area on the main floor. We had better luck the year we rented kayaks and paddled around the bay and saw plenty of them up close. As you enter the Monterey Bay habitat section of the aquarium on the main floor, you can't help but marvel at the three stories tall kelp forest exhibit, which is approximately 28 feet or eight and a half meters tall, making it one of the tallest aquarium exhibits in the world. And it holds about 330,000 gallons or 1.2 million liters of seawater. It can be seen from both the main and second floor viewing areas and can provide a dizzying experience from the second floor. It's truly mesmerizing and we had trouble stepping away from it to explore the rest of the facility. The aquarium construction began in 1978 with a focus on integrating the exhibits with Monterey Bay, thus blending the facility with its natural surroundings. The aquarium officially opened in October of 1984. The idea for the aquarium was conceived by marine biologists and conservationists with significant funding from David and Lucille Packard and involvement of their daughters, Julie and Nancy. As a response to growing concerns about the impact of fishing and aquaculture on the world's oceans and with conservation and education being cornerstones of the aquarium's mission, the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch program was initiated in 1999. Over the last 25 years, Seafood Watch has been the leading source of science-based information for sustainable seafood around the world. The aviary at the Monterey Bay Aquarium typically features birds that are native to the coastal habitats of California and the Pacific Ocean. The birds come from a variety of sources, including the Rescue and Rehab Program. Monterey Bay Aquarium's Rescue and Rehabilitation Program is dedicated to the rescue, rehabilitation, and release of marine wildlife, particularly focusing on sea otters and sea birds. The aquarium has a strong educational component to promote marine conservation awareness. In addition to all of the information that is shared in all of the exhibits, the shows, and the feedings throughout the day, including those in the auditorium, there are hands-on exhibits where curious folks of all ages, like us, can touch sea urchins and bat rays. No kids were harmed in the making of this video as we gently used our fingertips to touch the silky bat rays and prickly sea urchins. I remember there were sea stars at one point, but all of them were under glass this time. This appears to be a trend in the aquarium industry for the health and safety of the sea stars.
The Monterey Bay Aquarium is home to around 20 African penguins and they are quite entertaining. We found some posing and others doing what looked like calisthenics. There's a penguin peak area that allows you to get even more up close and personal with these penguins that are classified as endangered due to threats such as oil spills, overfishing, and habitat destruction. We found both Nemo and Dory, but couldn't find Hank, the seven tentacled octopus, or more accurately, the septopus. Hank is fictional. You know that, right? Of course I do. The aquarium does have an eight tentacled giant Pacific octopus, but it was in hiding when we went looking for it. How does one lose a 150 pound <laughs> octopus? The tank wasn't that big. The aquarium has a massive pump on the roof that pulls water from the ocean into the kelp forest. It causes the movement of the kelp for the tide simulation. Water from there is then pumped through all the other displays and exits into the great tide pool, ultimately back into the bay. I think that is so incredibly cool. In the great tide pool itself, very lucky eight to 13 year olds have a unique opportunity to experience scuba diving in a safe and controlled environment. Designed to introduce kids to the underwater world and foster a love for marine life and conservation, the Underwater Explorers program looked like a lot of fun. I think we all wanted to be 13. It's also a lot clearer here than the bay when I attempted my open water dive for my scuba certification. I could not see my hand in front of my face, panicked, and never got certified. What was originally one building was later expanded to create additional space to showcase a broader array of marine life and ecosystems, particularly those representing the open ocean, including hammerhead sharks, sea turtles, tuna, and jellyfish in the Open Sea Exhibit. The Open Sea Exhibit is a massive 1.2 million gallon tank that simulates the open ocean environment. The tank features one of the largest single paned windows in the world, measuring 54 feet wide and 17 feet high, providing an expansive view of the marine life inside. The Into the Deep Exploring Our Undiscovered Ocean exhibit at the Monterey Bay Aquarium offers visitors a fascinating look into the mysterious and largely unexplored deep sea. We were surprised by how many people were at the aquarium and had planned on exploring more of Monterey, but we maxed out on people and needed to be outdoors and away from them. Part two of our Monterey adventure is what, Zeke? We are going to ride e-bikes on the seventh part of the 17 mile drive. <sighs> These are almost the exact same bikes that we rode when we were up in Whistler, so it should be uh, should be comfortable. Are and we gonna, it's be, gonna off be on road at all? I don't think so. I think we're gonna be on pretty well established road trail bike lane. And this has a throttle, which I don't think I'm used to. So no, can we like, different. can we not use the throttle? You can certainly not use the throttle and it'll just be pedal assist, just like you're biking home. And that's all I want is pedal, but I don't think we really want me going fast with the throttle on a two wheeled item. If you don't want to go fast, then don't go fast. <laughs> Here we go.
you're down in this area and you're looking for something outdoors with some absolutely gorgeous scenery, pop, uh, pop some snacks into a backpack, get some e-bikes uh, from Big Sur Adventures. It's a great way to see this part of the coast and this part of California, which is absolutely exquisite. A uh, 17 mile drive is known for the golf courses, the, the lodges, um, the gorgeous scenery and the beautiful houses, or let's just say some humongous, very expensive houses. Not all of them were beautiful. I would, I would totally 10 out of 10 recommend this. So oh, it was a good thing for us to give that a try. It was the very first time for me on an e-bike with a throttle and I'm licensed to ride a motorcycle. I shouldn't because I fall over and this is a little too close to that. I don't need to be doing that again. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah. It was fun.